Hey, welcome back to Diode Press. I'm Graham. So today's video, we're going to be making a print using a photopolymer plate. So if you're not familiar with what a polymer plate is, what it is is a sheet of this polymer material and they put a negative film over the solid sheet and expose it to light. And then wherever the light can go through, that's the part that, that solidifies. Then they rinse out the rest of your plate. So the negative I use for this, all of this material for these images allowed light to go through and the rest of it was blocked out. And so this is what hardened under the UV light. So to make these plates, I used a company called Boxcar Press and I've used them in the past and they've always been really good. So basically you just upload your artwork to their website using Illustrator graphics or Photoshop. You know, they have a whole list of graphic types that they accept. And then they process the plate and then ship it out to you. And so for the artwork, you can use really whatever you want. But I made this woodcut print a couple of years ago and it was just a basic two color woodcut. And so I basically took this and I scanned it in and then I broke apart the layers again and then had that printed onto, you know, made into the photopolymer plate with these two plates down here. And so that's what we're gonna print in this video. And so I've only ever used Boxcar Press to make my photopolymer plates. So I don't know if everyone does it the same way, all the different services to do it, but basically it comes on these sheets and the back has a self-adhesive two-sided backing. As you can peel off this protective layer and stick it onto whatever you want. And there's something called a boxcar base, which is a, a large like aluminum panel. And people use that a lot for letterpress printing. And this will stick on there and you can align it. And when you're done, you can peel it away. And for this print, I'm just sticking it onto mat board just because I have actually extras. So I'm not worried if I can't peel it off again. But if you ever do get this and, you know, the, the, the stick gets, you know, dirty and doesn't work anymore, you can also peel off the double-sided sticky material and they sell new sheets of it that you can apply to the polymer plate. And so these should really last, you know, a super long time. You know, I don't, I don't know if it'll ever wear out, you know, at least at the size of the additions that I ever do. And most places also charge by, by area of the plate that you get printed. So it makes sense to group together a bunch of different images that you're going to use rather than send it out just for, you know, one small print. Cause this, you know, there's a minimum size that they'll make. So for this small bison print is actually a graphic from one of my other prints, but that's what it looks like when it's printed. So you can see it really picks up the detail well. And as long as you don't over ink the plate, you can get, you know, text and all sorts of really crisp detail and it makes a really nice embossing into the paper as well. Or I guess they would say a debossing. So let's jump right into making the print. The photopolymer plate has an adhesive backing. So you just peel off the protective layer and then it'll stick to whatever you want it to. So here I'm applying it to a piece of mat board with a registration guide that I drew on. And this will allow me to line up the paper onto the plate consistently. And then I'm just using the back of an X-Acto blade to burnish it down onto the mat board. Normally you'd apply it to an aluminum base like the boxcar base that they sell, which has like a registration guide on there, or you can do it right to your press bed. But since this is just like a one-off project, I'm just using the mat board. So for the ink, I'm using Gamblin oil-based relief ink. And then by blending a couple of the different colors, I came up with my final two colors for this print. And then I went ahead and rolled them up into a blend roll or a rainbow roll. And the only trick with a rainbow roll like this is just to be consistent how you're rolling it up. So you don't overlap the colors or go at an angle. You want to keep everything the same. And same when you apply it onto the plate. You can see light pencil marks off to the right side where I have kind of the angle that I want. So every time I roll up the plate, I can make sure each one looks the same. And then here I'm lining up the mark I made on the back of my paper with the mark I made onto the mat board. And this will allow me to get every print lined up the same. And then I can go ahead and run it through the press. All right, and here's layer one done. I printed about 15 of these and then gave them three or four days to you know fully dry before I moved on to the next color. And for that final color, I'm using Prussian blue and then adding black to it. So it's basically black, but it has a blue tint. And this will help it mix with the base layers a little bit better and not be such a stark contrast. And once I was happy with the final color I came up with, I rolled up the ink slab and then applied it to the plate. And I found for this print, if I do lots of really light layers as I'm inking it up, it keeps it from building up and going and filling in all the detail. And 
And then here, if all goes well, I can line up on that same mark, and this plate should line up perfectly onto the first printed image. And there it is. It looks like the registration worked out pretty good. All right, so that was a pretty quick process. You know, using the polymer plates really makes the whole process a lot simpler from, you know, carving the blocks or doing etchings or mesotints. It's really a more streamlined process once you have your artwork and you have the plates. And so I was really happy with how the final print came out with the two blocks and the black key block on it. But I also really like the look of just the, the first block. It's a little bit more abstract looking. So I did 10 of them like this, and I did 10 with the, you know, both blocks printed. And so if you're interested in one of these prints, I'll have a link in the description box where you can pick one of them up. So I think that's gonna wrap it up for this week. I'll be back soon with a new video. Thanks a lot for watching. To keep up with the videos when they're posted, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to help support the creation of these videos, you can check out the Diode Press Patreon page. Thanks.